Hi, I'm Peter from Copy Parts and I'm here with Cosimo from Sciada all the way in Venice, Italy. First things first, Cosimo, welcome to the channel. Thank you for having me here, Pedro. It's a pleasure uh, and it's the opportunity for me to present in the Australian market Hoop, which is a brewer that we presented this year, early this year, and already won an award in Athens mm -hmm. for the best new brewer in the consumer category. So I would like to show, I would like to start by showing how it works and how yep. it's made because this way we can then talk about what it does and what are the advantages and benefits for people using it. So Hoop is made of BPA free polymers, plastic if you want, but these are hard polymers that resist to high temperature and are dishwasher safe. And it's made of three parts, the black cone, the white container, the vessel or the cup or the bowl, as you want yep. to call it. And there is the third part is a very thin filter that we call clear brew filter. So the way hoop works and how you prepare it is you place the filter here in the middle, which I'm going to be doing now, which is pretty simple to put in right there. And then you screw the cone on it so it becomes pretty tense, like a drum yep. skin, you know, yep. when you're playing drums very, very hard. Now, what I want to show about hoop, and probably you can't capture this on camera, or maybe you can't, but there are 12 holes here at the bottom of the cone that let the water flow through between the outer ball, and that's where you pour the water, and the inner cone, that's where you put the coffee. So the two areas of the brewer stay separated. The coffee and the water have two different directions, so it's very easy to use it. So now, this is what it looks when the filter is yeah. in, and this is how it looks on the other side. So coffee will go here and water will go here. The beauty about it is that when you use it, you don't need really to know much. This filter was created by Chiado in order to test grinders. Yep. That's how we started to use it because we want to standardize extraction independently from whom did it. Yeah. Then it became something we started looking to because we said, look, instead of the mocha pot, which is a big part of Italian culture of brewing coffee at home, why don't we make something that our sister, mothers, uncles, grandpas can use to make yep. coffee? And who was the answer? So this is a great brew method for people that don't know how to brew coffee, because the only thing you need to do is having 15 grams of coffee that you put here in the middle, which I'm gonna be doing now, in the inner, you know, the black cone in the middle. So these were pre-measured 15 grams of coffee. And now we need water. And the only thing we'll need to do is put this water all at once on the outer ball. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna start the timer on the scale and pour the water all at once. 250 grams of water on the outer ball. We are at 250 now. Okay, so now the hoop will do its thing and we can have a chat, okay. see, and that's the example. How much did it take me to prepare the hoop? Just chuck the coffee in the middle and then water on the outside. What I really liked about it and playing with it earlier with you was one, you can't really stuff it up. When we were dialing in the grinder, we went a bit over time and things like that and it still tasted really good. But two, I can imagine this in two scenarios. One at home where someone sets it up and goes and does some online shopping or goes and has a shower or looks after the kids or whatever it might be. Or in a cafe scenario where you could bank these up and have multiple brews yeah. going at the same time. The biggest issue in cafes when you only have one or two baristas is they can't be stuck doing a pour over coffee when they have to serve customers. And this allows you to have pour over in a very nice workflow. Yeah, two, the two benefits of Hoop are these, workflow. Workflow because it doesn't get in the way of other things you're doing. Yeah. Because by it can be boring in a way, yeah. but you know, it, it removes the human error. Yeah. It removes it. This is a no bypass brewer. So yeah. all the water will go through the coffee and all the water will stay clear until it goes to the coffee. As long as you don't agitate, you don't have to touch it. The, co the concept about this, it doesn't need it to be touched. The opposite of the brewers that are there on the market, where yeah. you're required to perform a lot of manual things in order to extract them properly or at the best. And you can pretty much do it without having any gear. So any tea kettle or any vessel with hot water, a vessel for the coffee to go into, 
ideally a scale, it does make things a lot easier. But you could have this whole setup and in a cafe you can just replicate it quite cheaply, whether it's four or five of them. Yeah, well this is the concept. We're trying to democratize flavor, making good flavor available, very forgiving, low cost to have this equipment. Some cafes spend a tons of money just to get their brew right, yep. and the barista still can use it because if either you have a trade-off between making a flat white and serving maybe three, four customers, yep. or making one of these which takes you five minutes to yep. brew, yep. if you have to stay there. Yep. With Hoop, you can have three or four. It brews by the cup, and the reason it brews by the cup is because it's designed to basically um, deliver maximum flavor by the cup. Yep. And so, if you wanted two cups, you just have two setups. Going you can have setups. Time. It's pretty accessible for price, yeah. so it's not 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 a problem. Uh, it's made in BPA-free plastic. Is actually it's still safe. made in Venice, Italy, which it's made in Italy. It's yes. crazy that a lot of these accessories now aren't no longer made no, in Italy. Yeah. So this is made right behind our factory, the injection molding yeah. that we use, and designed in Italy. It's patent pen is protected. By, sorry. Um, both functionally and design-wise, so yeah. it's it's uh, it's the first brewer that comes from Europe in yeah. reality, and that's an interesting thing. It can also be used for cupping too, and really standardize the. Yeah, that's the thing. Is hoop eliminates training needed. Yeah. It eliminates uh, variability in extraction. So the way you pour, the way the water will touch the coffee, creates a different agitation. If you pour from a higher distance or a lower distance, you change the the impact the water has in coffee. Yeah. But because this is a no bypass and the water actually touches the plastic before it touches the coffee, yeah. that hit when you pour the water is absorbed mostly by the plastic and the flow is controlled by the holes. Yeah. So there is nothing you can do wrong in reality as long as you pour in the outer <laughs> side. Outer side. So it's and a conceptual lot of people and leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. Go serve customers, That's what people, go have a shower, do whatever yeah, you want. But the extraction quality you get is one of the best filters you've ever had in your life. And that's that's the only you know that's the main main thing about this thing. Training is not needed. There is consistency. So in cupping, the agitation of the bowl will also affect the flavor. So that's why for cupping is ideal because you can do cuppings. So this is a B to C yeah, and B to B. We just finished business. right on yeah. four minutes. Yeah, four minutes now is I've what it takes. Now I've got a little hidden vessel down here just to make it really clean. So let's move this across. Move yeah. it out of the way. And Let's I'll let you go. serve the coffee. Yeah, so I give it a little spin just to make sure that the coffee, when it falls down, you know, coffee tends to strat the solids inside the liquid and the solution tend to stratify a bit. So by doing this, you make sure that everything is homogeneous and the same in flavor. And this, it's a beautiful filter coffee. Cheers, Pedro. Cheers. Still surprises me how such a simple brewer See? can do this. Clean, sweet. And even when off camera when we we're dialing in, all we had to do was dial in the grinder. And that's only because we we're using the we we're using an EK off camera, but we we're using it for espresso before, so I had to just change it and yeah, took once us you two, find the setting, it's that setting. It right. You don't have to change it all the time. Every coffee will go through that at that setting, and that's the beauty of it. So, I 15 grams, 250, one setting. I really feel in two approaches for home where someone can just easily do it without too much gear. You really only need a very small amount of gear to have a really good result. And also in a cafe, I can just see a cafe. It helps roasters because roasters till now have had problems selling fuel to coffee. Because the labor in Australia, the baristas, you just can't get a barista to make espresso serve customers. And if you have four or five baristas in the cafe, you can't have someone dedicated to filter. When this, they can just be doing it off the side. All they have to do is keep an eye on I the I managed time. the roastery in my past, yeah. and I can tell you, I could have sold a lot more filter if I had something like who. I had to spend a lot of money in our flagship cafes to get the filter right. Yeah. This, it's a fraction, infinitesimal fraction of that investment. Yeah. And you get a much better result. Your wholesale accounts yeah. will be more confident about serving filter because yeah. it's easy for them. It doesn't get in their way of selling flat whites or long blacks. Yeah. So they don't have to lose an account to get another account. There is no trade-off. And can that's a batch great... brew, it's always fresh. It's not sitting there. Look, this is also, yeah. So batch brew sits there. This one has the advantage of being a manual brew. Yeah including the, the cost of it and the yep. price you can ask for because yep. it extracts like a manual brew. Yep. 
yeah. bread brew yeah. you normally know, is cheaper. Yeah. And it sits there, it's soapy, you all those bubbles on top. So the presentation of this product is a lot better. It's mm. high quality. This yeah. is the same thing of actually is very similar to the taste or extraction you would get from a V60 or a Kalita, just to yeah. give a comparison. Yeah, yeah. Just cleaner and sweeter, usually with the same coffee. And the advantage is that when you do a V60, even if the same barista, the same hand, the same water, same coffee are used, each V60 will be different. Yeah. With this one, you won't get that. Yeah. yeah. Standardizes extraction to, to really a much higher precision in consistency really, than you any other method. Your water quality consistent. Yes. And great coffee. Yes. And the right grind. But those are things you do once. And on that note, let me know on the comments below. What do you think of the hoop? I'm interested to know. Is it hoop yeah or hoop nah? <laughs> and Cosimo, thank Soup you so much. Hoop yeah for me. Yeah, it's definitely hoop yeah <laughs> for me. Um, I'm actually stealing this. It's going to my house. Okay. And we didn't cover that, but just to clean, you literally just put it over the bin or whatever it might be, turn it, and it'll just fall through. There you go. Super easy. And then just give it a rinse. Once again, <laughs> thank you for coming in. Thank I really Pedro. appreciate it. It was a pleasure. I've really enjoyed the coffee. Thank you for product. having me really enjoyed today and like always if you like the video please like and subscribe and see you on the next video thank you